welcome to the Making Customized Maps with Google My Maps program. My name is Bethany and I'm a library assistant at Mesa County Libraries. Today I will be demonstrating how to use Google My Maps to create a map. Google My Maps is a feature of Google that allows you to create and share maps. To begin, you will need a Google account. However, if you do not already have one, it is free and easy to sign up. So after you have signed up or signed into your account, there are two ways to navigate to Google My Maps. One way is to go to your Google Drive. You can either type drive.google.com up here in your browser, or click the menu icon to the left of the circle with your picture or initials, and then find and click on Drive. For those who aren't familiar, Google Drive is a cloud-based application system that lets you store documents and files. So after navigating to Drive, you can then click on the New button on the left-hand side of the screen and go down to More at the bottom. And the third option you will see is Google My Maps. You can click on that to be taken to the site. Another way, and the way I like to do it, is to come up here to the bar and type in google.com slash mymaps, and that'll take you directly to the site. So as you can see, over here we have an option to create a new map. But first, let's talk about some of the other options. The All option is going to show you all maps, whether you own them or not. And Owned will show you all of the maps that you owned and the ones that you've created. Not Owned will show you maps that were created by other people. And the Shared option is going to show you maps that were specifically shared to your Google account by another person. Lastly, the Recent one is going to show you the maps that you've most recently interacted with. This would be a particularly helpful option if you find yourself with a lot of maps. You can also change the view of the maps from a grid view, which has the picture, to a list view, and you can alphabetize them by title or organize when they were last modified or edited. So now let's get to the fun part of creating a map. To begin, you're going to click Create a New Map. And as you can see, that's going to take you to a zoomed out view. And in my case, it is of the United States. On the left, you have a box that includes the title of the map, which right now is untitled map. But it also has options like add layer, share, and preview. There is also an untitled layer and a base map option, but we'll get to those in a bit. First, let's change the title of the map. By double clicking on it, it'll bring up this box. For this map, I want to make a map of campsites in the United States that I have tried or ones that I want to try. So I'm gonna give my map a title that is relevant to this. And that will be campsites. Now you can add a description, but I'm not gonna add a description to mine. And always make sure you click save. So now you can see over here where it previously said untitled map, it now says campsites. I'm then going to rename the layer over here. So a layer in Google My Maps allows you to store location data and helps you group locations into categories. And that'll make a little bit more sense in a bit. But first I'm going to rename this layer favorite because I'm going to put campsites that I have stayed at and that I really enjoy in this layer. And to do that, I'll click the three buttons to the very right that says layer options and click rename this layer. And I'm gonna name it favorites. And then click save. So the first option, there are multiple options to adding points to a map and we're gonna walk through each of them. The first option is to find the points on the map manually and this can be a little bit difficult, but I still want to show you even if it is difficult. So when I was a kid, we always camped at Big Creek Campground in the Grand Mesa National Forest. 
and it was still one of my favorite places to camp, so I want to add it to this layer. I know that it's between Cedar Ridge and Colburn, so I'm going to scroll with my mouse and see if I can find it. There's Cedar Ridge, and then there is Colbrin. And I also know that it's near Leon Peak, so that's helpful that that popped up for me. So we're going to keep scrolling. And here it is right here. So we will go ahead and click on that. And it brings up a box that has more details about it, as well as the name. And what we're going to do is we are going to click Add to Map. So this adds a point to the map, as you can see here, and it also adds it over here under my favorites. Now, let's say you're having a bit of trouble finding your location. You can change it from base map to satellite, and that'll help you if there's a landmark that you know is near the location, you'll be able to see it more easily with the satellite. But I'm gonna go back to the base map, and now we have our point under favorite. So before we explore the next option of adding points to maps, I'm going to add a layer because we're going to add this to a different layer. So I'm going to rename this one by going to layer options, these three buttons, these three dots, I'm sorry, over here and click rename this layer. And I'm going to rename this one second chance. And in this layer, I am going to put campsites that I've tried and for some reason maybe just didn't like them the first time, but I want to give them another try. And one of those that I want to give another try is the Saddlehorn Campground. And to do, to find the Saddlehorn Campground, I'm actually going to type it up here in the search bar. So I will type Saddlehorn Campground and it luckily pops up as an option for me. And I will click that. Now I could click add to map. However, if I do that, it'll add it to both the favorites layer and the second chance layer. But I only want it on the second chance layer. So I'm going to uncheck this favorites layer and then click add to map. You can see that it added another point to the map. However, it's still blue if we click favorites. Both of these are still blue, and I don't want them to both be blue, so I'm going to change the color of the second chance, and I'm gonna change it to yellow. That way, when I scroll out, you can more easily see the difference between the two because they are not the same color. Now, when I uncheck favorites, that point will disappear. When I uncheck second chance, that point will disappear. So now you can see what I mean by layers grouping locations. It helps users refine their search to the criteria that is most applicable to them. For example, if I only wanted to see my favorite campsites, I could uncheck second chance and only see the campsites that are under my favorite. Okay. Now for the last method. I find this method particularly useful if you have a lot of locations that you want to put in. So let's click add to layer. So under the title of the layer, you will see the option to import. So I am going to click import. And that will bring you up here to this box that has three different options. Now you can either upload a file from your device, from your Google Drive, or your photo albums. And I'm going to upload the Excel sheet that I made, but you could also upload a Google sheet from your drive. So let's take a look at the Excel sheet that I made. These are some campsites within the United States that I haven't tried, but that I want to. So I have put them in a Excel sheet and I have a row at the top that has the address for the first column and a title of campsite for the second column, and you will see why that is important in a minute. I prefer making it with the two columns, one with address in one and one with the campsite name in the other, 
because if you do not do that, then Google My Maps, it's just using its best guess based on the campsite name to decide which one you want. So for instance, if there was another campsite called Big Creek in a different state, then it might put it in that state instead of the one that we want in Colorado. So now let's go ahead and upload it. So we are going to click select a file from your device and it is in my desktop and it is new campsites and we will click open. And now you can see why it was important to have the titles at the top of the columns. The first option is asking us to select the columns from the file that tell us where to put the place marks on the map. And we want to use the address column for that. So we will check next to address and put continue. Next, we want to title our markers and we're going to use the campsite column for that and click continue. And then as you can see, it auto populated all of the addresses that I put in the sheet. It still comes up as the same color as the favorites one. So we want to make sure that we change that. Now you can either keep it individual or change it to uniform style. If you change it to uniform and then click the paint button to change the color, it'll change all of them at the same time. If you did it as individual instead, you would have to go to each specific point and change the color. However, it is helpful to have the style individual if you want to differentiate even further between points in a layer. So say I want to differentiate and say which ones have laundry facilities. You can change the icon of the point. So I'm going to click the paint button again. And down here you will see popular icons and more icons. So I'm going to click more icons. So we'll see if we can find something with clothes or a washing machine. We're going to do, um, we're going to do plumbing instead. So we'll do plumbing and that's that. And then you can see now this one has a plumbing icon here. So then if I was looking, I could see which ones have plumbing. Now that may get difficult if you want if you had a lot of points, you would have to do that for each of them if they if some of them didn't have it. So instead you could just upload another layer that said plumbing instead and then just change that to uniform. We are going to change it back to uniform just because I don't think we need to um, keep them that way. Now let's say I accidentally added a point that I don't want to keep. I can click on it and then click the delete feature, which is the trash can to the very right, and it will disappear. So using the preview option at the top, I can see what my map is going to look like when I share it with people. Now you'll see here on the side that the ones that are individual styles are going to show each separate point, whereas the ones that are uniform are going to have them in a drop down menu. So if you also don't like the way this looks, you would want to do them individual, or if you like this better, you would want to do them as uniform. So you can either by sharing you can either send the link up here or you can invite people down here. You can give them access to edit or access to only view. So if they can edit, they can add their points. So if you don't want them to be able to do that, you just want to do view. If you send them this link, they will not be able to change it. They will only be able to view it. If you're interested in learning more about maps after this program, we have plenty of resources available in our catalog. So if I search map up here in our catalog,
and then I put the limiter over here to nonfiction, meaning it'll only show me nonfiction. You can see we have over a hundred thousand different items that could be related to maps. Now if you keep map in the search bar and then you go to advanced search, we can find maps that are just maps. So we will do optional filters and then we want to change the format category to other and then we are going to do find. Now you can see it has brought up our collection of maps that we have and there are either physical copies of the maps or digital copies of the maps and you can see there are quite a few different ones. The ones that are available online are going to say available online in green. When the Mesa County Library's locations are open to the public again, be sure to check out the Rashley Regional History Room, which is downstairs at the Central Library in Grand Junction. In addition to city directories, old yearbooks, and railway information, there are also several maps that you can browse. The items in this room cannot be checked out, but you're welcome to browse them while you are in the room. And to end, I encourage you to get creative with your maps. A few examples of maps that you could make are all the places that your ancestors lived. So you could do an ancestry map. You can also map your favorite hikes, places that you want to visit, all sorts of things. The options are really limitless here. And I also encourage you to take screenshots of your map and share it with us through our email, which is askmcpld.org or our social media, because we want to see what you've come up with. So thank you very much for joining me and I hope you get creative with your maps. <laughs>